Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the Lathrixian fleet, which now contains a single spite, the nine-barrel turret variation of the bunker, the original which the bunker was created after. Today, our fleet, our little navy, contains a much larger force. Therefore, being able to hopefully have a bit more priority when it comes to battles and hopefully we will have more spawns than the enemy or possibly the same. We also have this little stalwart on its way amongst other things. So straight away we're in a battle, they have sent a strength 120 to contest this resource zone. So it's a good time to actually begin the test. Oh, look at that. I can spawn in the spite, a bulwark, everything I wanted, but actually, I would much rather this bunker, whichever one this is, get the priority gates. Definitely this one there. Can I spawn in both the bunker and the spite? I can together and nothing more. That's absolutely fantastic. So let's skip ahead and get straight into the battle. Today will be a battling video. The next video will be a science video because I have devious plans to wipe out the white flayers. Battle has begun and the spite is happily firing away at the enemy, seemingly doing a massive amount of damage. Of course, the bunker there as well, contributing heavily. So the first wave of enemies is quite small. It has a stalwart and a parapet and nothing yet. Oh my lord! Well, we missed that for two seconds. The little parapet there also getting absolutely smashed by the combined forces of the bunker and its parent, the spite. Well, that was a fairly um, easily decided battle. I'm really looking forward to the bulwark though, because that's what the spite is actually made for, fighting that monstrosity of metal. Of course, the volleys of missiles also help. It must be said. We have exactly zero engine power. Apparently, I didn't test the spite of its new engines correctly. I'm assuming that's coming from all of the ammunition processors draining the rest of the energy. And so the bulwark is here. And here come the shells. The aim, yep, the aim is now finally locked on. Let's see how much damage this actually does. And how much damage is done to the spite. A good test of its shields. Oh my word. I'm sorry, did you have armor? D you have a lot less now. But yep, you have even, yep, okay. That, there goes everything you've ever known and loved. I'm sorry, sir. Happily just stripping the bulwark of all of its armor. And as it gets closer, it will get ever better at aiming. However, I, d I have now noticed that our little bunker is getting very dangerously close to the firing line. I am yet to change the AI, which I desperately need to do. I also noticed the bunk actually hitting itself a little bit as well, which didn't happen in the last few battles, but is happening now. Oh, yep, the whole, the spite is still firing away. Well, this is a good field test. We found out that the spite can do a nasty bit of damage to the larger vessels, and that the hull needs a little... Sorry, the bunker still needs a little bit of work. Okay, this should be too close now for the Spite's main gun to fire. They both have the same naval AI, which I desperately need to change. Well, less for the bunker. I don't mind the bunker getting so close, perhaps if we add rams, but if there's a Spite involved, then we definitely need it to be a little bit more protected. And we're done. A decisive victory. Oh, no, no, we're not. Oh, no. Bunker. 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 Um, hello, Bunker. How are you, buddy? Let's withdraw you, because you're right in the freaking firing line of the spite, and I don't want to lose you. Well, that was loud. Once again, seeing just how much collateral damage that nine-barreled cannon can actually bring. Oh, look. A, lo a load of ass of our smaller ships have spawned in. Fantastic. Yeah. 
Not really much this poor little ship could do there, really. It didn't help as well that we did spawn in very close to the enemy. I'm not quite sure why I did that. We spawned, like, right next to them, when we could have positioned them miles off. Which would have also helped out a lot. So, uh, there we go, though. A nice victory, indeed. We have most of our ships actually spawning in. So, we have the Spite. We have one of the enemy bulwarks that we stole. One little ship whose name escapes me. Why are you? You're the stockade. Then we have the bunker, which is currently hiding. We have the bunker, which is actually spawned in, which is actually currently acting as a resource gatherer. And we have this little fellow at the back, which is a stolen stalwart. The stalwart and the stockade. Well, I think I'm going to quickly tamper with the AI of both the bunker and the spite, and we'll be right back in another battle. A small strength 40 enemy threatens us, and of course, we respond with maximum force, spawning in the spite with new evil AI. So from now on, it should try to stay a minimum of 1,000 blocks away. The big problem with this is that the missile system is likely just about in range, as in just about. There is a good chance that in the future, it will simply miss any, uh, any fast moving targets. Actually, no, it looks like it's out of range already, so that's pretty darn terrible. Also, of course, the main gun of the Spite is not made for long-range engagements. It's made for fun hitting anything and hitting everything. But not at long range. Where, did, where are those shots coming from? Oh, apparently we have other ships also spawned in because we have such a huge force advantage. Hello, second ship. Yes, let me test my shields upon you. We actually lost one of the engines in the last battle, I didn't even notice until afterwards. Remember that each one of these shells is actually more powerful than the, wow, than the Bulwark's main cannon. And it shoots them very, very quickly. So although only about 10% actually hit the mark, the collateral damage they can do, as you can see, is kind of astonishing, honestly. Which makes me very happy indeed. After this, we're going to make a, a quick push and try to get closer to the Onyx Throne, which is, of course, the Onyx Watch's uh, base, its last resistance against us. And I really, really do think I'm going to make the missiles longer range. As much as I love them being agile as they are, they're, right now at least, they're getting almost no use. They run out of fuel far too fast. They do have variable thrusters, but I'm going to make them a little bit slower and add an extra fuel tank at, and sacrifice a single fin. They currently have three three fins and two fuel tanks. They're going to be changing to two, two fins and three fuel tanks, so a third extra range, thus even further increased by the slowing down of the speed as well. Same warheads though, because the warheads are devastating. Just look at, look at how they all collect. Well, well done, Spite, for killing yet another enemy. And well done, you long-range fellows all the way back there. Was that a bulwark that was firing? I believe, oh, a bulwark and a bunker were firing over the hill. Excellent. Well, that stopped their recent incursion. We have the Scythe and its Serpents actually currently defending here because of the small attacks they kept sending. And we have a lot of the Traitors also kind of milling around. I may try to use the scythe to destroy this as we head on north, thus not needing to fight everything. Hmm, would they win though? Would they win? A single scythe and a handful of serpents engage the Onyx Watch fleet to defend our glorious motherland. Well, actually, to invade theirs, but, you know, details and stuff. Well, it's not going too badly so far, but of course we have only begun. One direct shot will be able to most likely take out the Serpents. However, with the enemy being so packed into one space and the Scythe generally going for the larger ships, this might be interesting, particularly with the mine deployment. There go the mines. The Serpents are still happily just picking away at the enemy. Ah. I will say, though, the damage that's been done so far has been very lacking. Although the torpedoes and the mines are the main damage source here, the serpents are mostly distractions, honestly. Oh, the minefield over here is about to hit the target, and... 
Well, not quite a whole breach, but there is mines now pretty much everywhere. Where is the scythe? The scythe is still happily going. Oh, its shield deflected a nice wave there. The scythe's shields have been improved since we have last fought. However, it has definitely taken a lot of damage on the back, including a weakening of certain elements. Yeah, it's definitely lost some of its ammo storage. No, 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 it's ammo storage. It's ammunition processors, I should say. It's still got all its barrels seemingly intact. Servants coming in for yet another attack run. It does look like the enemy just kind of... We're just circling them a little bit too fast for their liking. Oh, that mine laying, that mine um, run was perfect, right into the center, and boom! One enemy sinking, and another going down quickly with mines being dropped everywhere. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, Scythe. I am tempted to create several Scythes and actually go into battle against some of the larger enemies like this, because that's pretty much what it's good against. The harpoon, the harpoons, the torpedoes it's dropping are doing a lot of damage, it's just hard to actually tell sometimes, because they're going straight underwater. Oh, the scythe looks a little bit like its control blocks have been destroyed. Yep, yeah, its control blocks have gone down. I think this is the end of the scythe in this battle. The serpents will continue the battle for it, hopefully. Don't drop the mines right now. Oh, darn, there's mines underneath me, isn't there? Well, abandon ship or abandon hope? No, I will go down with the ship. Yeah, this stage is not much really we can do. The scythe is going down. As soon as it hits the water, it's just going to be a sitting duck. Any torpedoes still left in the water? Mm, by the looks of it, they've all been used up. That healing from the enemy, yeah, there we go, has pretty much done us in. Too damaged, the scythe is officially going down. Its shielding wasn't quite enough. Most of the enemies seem to target it. I believe that the Onyx Watch does have a tendency to go for the largest enemy first, the, the enemy with the largest mass. Make sure we're not holding the missiles and carry on. However, the enemy aren't looking great. And I do actually have an upgraded version of the Serpent which will soon be replacing these. It isn't actually a retrofit though, it's a full-on new version. It's a complete huge change. So rather than using the retrofit option, I'm just going to wait until these eventually have served their purpose and then respawn those. The new Serpent was actually originally designed to be shot from our aircraft carrier, and it probably still will be, just it can also do wonders on its own, certainly a lot better than the older variation. I can't believe these things are still alive. Admittedly, not looking too great right now, but they are still alive and they are still fighting. Which one am I on? Okay, I'm on the one which is still moving okay. Just not enough damage against the thick armor of the Onyx Watch. We just can't sink them. Well, a couple of them we have, but... The missiles aren't that powerful on the Serpents. They're only one warhead. It's just a very simple fragment warhead. Nothing special about it. Very agile, but nothing else going for it. I may skip ahead here, because it does seem like we're just kind of slowly being whittled down. Yar har, a pirate's life for me. I really just can't let the... The proud and brave serpents die without at least a fight. So we're going to go ahead and try to capture this little ship here. Which I believe is... Darn, really? Did the other... Wait, am I repairing? No, it's got someone, re so something repairing it nearby. We're going to have to destroy them in very, very short succession. With a really loud Ganon. Well, Gatling gun thing, honestly. Minigun, that's the word I'm looking for. Where is I need, I need to know the position of the other AI so I can shoot it from underneath. Where is it? It's up there somewhere. Okay, the bottom one's destroyed. Can we break this? Okay, there we go. We've stolen the stalwart. The stalwart is ours. Our little serpent over here actually landed right next to it, and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. Oh, little serpent. The little serpent that could. Come on, you can get back up in the air, right? No, it's still got some of its balloon sections damaged. 
At least our stalwart is now being, well, yep, the stalwart we just stole is now being shot at by its allies, giving our serpents a little bit of a chance to perhaps recoup. What on earth? How did you even do that? How do you flip an Onyx Watch ship? I don't... Mm. I'm just going to go to the other stalwart. Oh, no, that, that's our stalwart. Yes, that's our stalwart in front of us. Is there another stalwart? They're like the easiest things to steal. No? Okay, well... I don't really know where they're stuck. Oh, our stalwarts! AI just came back online! Ha <laughs> ha! Glorious! We're right in the middle of the battle, and honestly, they seem to be taking quite a bit of damage now. It's all starting to stack up. Their ships are sinking and being damaged now at point-blank range. This one is their, their healer, if we can take this out. We're in a very good position indeed. However, I do want to know where this thing's AI is. I've never captured one of these before. Which one is this? This is the Warden. I would like a Warden. I've always wanted a Warden. Perhaps I should turn off my Stalwart. It's going to happily destroy this thing otherwise. Wait, is that... Oh, okay, so there's two healers nearby. Okay, where is your AI? Tell me, brave soul. I'm guessing this block of metal. No, that's your ammo. You do like blocks of metal for your AI, so... Uh, be right back. Okay, that's two of the AI of the Warden knocked out. By the looks of it, ow. The next AI is directly underneath us. I'm not sure if that was my own shots or a shell hitting us from behind. One of the two. And AI should be... Aha! There we go. I'm hoping this is it. I'm not sure if it is, though. But there is two down here. Two where I just was. Was that it? No, there is still more AI remaining. But where is the question. It's one of those issues, as soon as you know where they are, honestly, it's really easy to capture a ship. It's just finding the AI in the first place that can be so, so problematic. Om nom 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 nom. The sneaky ship. Also, ignore the bell sounding in the background. The joy of living next to a church, I suppose. It turns out that the other mainframes were where the flags were, so... There we go, we now have the Warden and its healing capabilities for ourselves. However, it is in the way of this serpent. So there's a good chance I'm going to have to somehow try to separate these, which I don't think I'll be able to do. Or, we're going to have to remove the, the Warden from the battle, which I think I will. We may win this, purely because of how bad the Onyx Watch is at handling any form of speed in the form of flyers. Most of the enemies seem to be either, well, dead or dying. We could try and capture the ship over there as well, whatever it is. Geronimo! Oh, oh it's this. Is this another warden by any chance? Yep, a second warden? Well, now we know where the AI is. This shouldn't be too difficult. So, if we go to the bottom... Oh look, flags with AI underneath them because, you know, they couldn't just use mainframe connectors. Nope, they're actual full-on mainframes rather than a connector with a... Oh, is that it? Darn. With a... I forgot what the word is here. Receiver. It doesn't have a receiver. There we go. Okay, well, let's get on board and let's find this thing's AI as well and hopefully capture it. If we win here, this is a huge momentum swing in favour of our glorious forces. It must be said. Okay, so the two... Oh, God, this is really weird. Upside down. The two there, aha, are already destroyed, but this one isn't. Is that the last one? By the looks of it, all the ones underneath that are already done. Nope, the ones underneath it, thanks serpents, are actually still there. Let's spawn on the stalwart. Which is actually doing a load of work for us. A change of targets. It turns out the warden was destroyed, sadly, as it was already under the two damaged rule. So now we're looking on this... Stockade and trying to find its AI. It's been a while since I've captured one of these things and I can't remember for the life of me where the AI is actually kept. It's also being very heavily shelled at the moment by our serpents, so we're in a little bit of a bad position. It must be said, we're in a little bit of a bad position. I may have also tried it out the serpents' missiles for slightly more potent, if less long-lived versions. Essentially, same size of missile, but now it has, a, has two warheads as opposed to one, at the cost of only having a single fuel tank. Basically meaning they're incredibly short range, but so is the serpent, so it doesn't seem to have actually mattered. Okay, now we're a little bit safer. Let's have a quick look-see if we can capture it. If not, well, then we simply get a kill. All the serpents seem to be focusing on this little thing. Is there any other enemy we can focus on? There is the stockade over there, but that's already being fought as well. Wait, is that, 
So there's two stock ages essentially, this one and this one. This one's under less fire. And I don't really want to stop the attack as we, I don't have all day. Okay, where on earth is it? There we go, we captured it. It turns out the AI was just next to this turret, in fact, being hidden by it. And with that, we are victorious. We lost the scythe, but no serpents. And overall, that was a very good performance by our old Air Force, which of course was there originally simply to defend these tiles. And here comes some more attacks against us. Only tiny strength 30s though, so we're going to brush these off and then start moving north. The last battle of the day, and honestly I expected this to be an airborne fleet. I do know that the Onyx Watch has at least one very large flyer, but apparently they're not sending that in this almost completely mountainous area. They're sending... Honestly, rather small ships for a strength 120 odd. So let's fight it regardless, to make sure our guys aren't actually in the mountain. And we'll be sending two bunkers and the flyer most likely. Yeah, two bunkers and the flyer most likely in this fight because the spike just simply won't have the room to stay that far back. Um, I won't be doing any major changes to our ships just yet until next episode though. But well, I'll do it all off camera because Spite needs some massive renovations. This episode was its field trials and although it's done incredibly well it has also done incredibly poorly in multiple respects, so we'll have to make sure those are changed next time. Okay, let battle commence. In go the two bunker brawlers, and the flyer is happily shooting away at range as well. A lot of the enemy ships, well, actually I think all of them have ran aground at the very start of the battle not the best. And I'll take this opportunity while we simply sit back and watch hopefully a very easy battle indeed to kind of discuss the major problem I think I have with the spite. The front is too high when, when it's moving due to its hydrofoils which, are cause, which is causing the gun to stop firing very early on because of its very, very stringent fail safes to make sure its main nine barrel gun doesn't destroy itself. This is terrible because if an enemy comes anywhere nearby it renders the spite almost useless. That would be okay if the bunker was not such a close range brawler because it means that these then get in the way if the spite is too long range and ends up shooting the bunker in the back. So I don't think the spite and the bunker will ever be a good grouping. The bunkers work well together because they get close and they can heal each other and they tend to do, well, what you can see here which is pepper very small enemies to death with shots and larger enemies than missiles and just their outlasting ability becomes their major strengths, even if they don't do all that much damage. As you can see, these are remarkably small ships against ours. They are absolutely, well, nothing, and yet it still takes quite a while. Where's our flyer? There it is. The flyer's helping as well. So that's one of the big things I have to address, and I don't think I can really fix the fact it's such a mismatch. Although I can, I can fix the missiles to make the spites missiles much longer range, which I will be doing, and I will be fixing it so the front dips a little while it's moving forwards as opposed to rises, thus giving it a little bit more leniency in close quarters if the enemy is directly in front of it. I think also the spite should be deployed already in a broadside position, which I haven't been doing just yet. So I've learned a lot of things, and next time we'll be doing it a lot better, everything will be a lot smoother and battles will go better, even though right now we have basically reached the end of this faction. The Onyx Watch did put up a really good fight, and they forced me to innovate and make better ships, but ultimately at this stage we have countered the- OW! Missiles to the face! You do have friend or foe, you know. I guess that's just trying to turn around. Wait, did I just go through the ship? No, that's our sh I thought- I, I honestly thought one of the missiles just went through the bunker and then out the other side, but actually, of course, it's just that- that bunker's missiles. <laughs> Release the broadside! Lots of little paper cuts very quickly add up to the death of a very large vessel. Oh, that, is, that, is that the spite in the background? Look, it's demonstrating the problem it has with almost shooting its allies. 
I also need to start having some some control blocks to prevent them ramming each other. Although, I think in this case, it was just a matter of everything spawning so closely together, even with control blocks. Unless I'm using um, a piece of coding, that's not really going to work. It did stop itself before actually ramming it, to, to its credit. Although it is now sinking because it's trying to reverse with hydrofoils. It does have very stringent kind of um, settings when it can reverse because reversing makes you go down if the hydrofoils are at 45 degrees. <laughs> Whereas if you go forwards, it makes you lift. Okay, victory! Fantastic! I've noted a few problems with multiple of our ships. We have lost the scythe, but ultimately, today was a good day of learning and a good bit of progress moving north. We've we defended against a strength 100 and something, we've drained this tile, we've drained this tile, the scythe and its forces have invaded here, everything's going well. Sorry for the very quick cut there and the rushed speaking, but the phone was going off in the background. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching, if you have enjoyed today's episode then of course likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel and most importantly shows that from the day Depth is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we will be doing some science for a secret weapon to finally wipe out the white flyers. And in the background, without recording, I will be finishing off the bunker and the spite to their finished stages. This will be the last time I edit them before making new ships in the future. So once again, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.